So I have a question for you. Has anybody here had a job interview that they were so excited for? Raise your hand. That's it? <laughs> now imagine if you go to this job interview and this door is being slammed in your face every single time, over and over again. This happened to me over 100 times when I came out of prison in 2013. See, I grew up in the Lower East Side section of Manhattan, where it was a very drug-infested neighborhood. And people would ask me, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I would tell them I want to be rich. And rich I became. At 13, I started selling drugs. And at 19, I was running one of the largest drug delivery services in New York City, and I was making over $2 million a year, and I had over 20 people working for me. <laughs> you shouldn't clap about that. <laughs> I'm not going to teach you how to sell drugs. <laughs> but at 23, the FBI caught up with me, and I was sentenced to seven years in prison. And when I was sentenced to seven years in prison, the doctors told me that I could die in prison within five years because of my health issues. See, I used to weigh over 230 pounds, and I suffered from all types of health issues. And my cholesterol levels were so high that they said I could die in prison within five years. And I did the math, and I said, I'm coming home in seven years, and I'm not going to die in prison. So I began working out. And in my nine by six prison cell, I lost over 70 pounds in six months. And then I helped over 20 inmates lose over 1,000 pounds combined. And I started this prison style boot camp in the prison yard. But towards the end of my incarceration, I ended up in this altercation with this officer. He basically placed his hands on me and I turned around on him. I only had two months to come home. And because of this situation, I was facing three more years in prison. And I promised my son that I was coming home. I told my six-year-old son at that time that I was coming home. And I lied. And I lied to him. And it, it devastated me. I was in this nine by six prison cell, 24 hour lockdown. It was my rock bottom. And then I vowed in this prison cell, and I said I was not going to go back to prison. I was not going to go back to the street life that I always went back to. See, at 13, I committed my first crime. And from 13 to 27, I was incarcerated 10 times. So I came home, and I thought it was going to be easier than what I thought. It was actually really, really hard. See. In America, 76% of inmates return back to prison because we have the lack of opportunities when we come out, and they have this application process that asks you if you've ever been committed of a criminal conviction. And you have to say yes or no. This quickly says, basically, you're not employable. So I came home to my no money, my mom's couch, and I came out with a dream to start a company, to start Combody, which hires formerly incarcerated individuals to teach fitness classes. And it was not only just a company, but it was a, a movement that I wanted to start because of the issues that we face with when we come home. So I started doing this in the local parks, then renting out studios, and I attracted the same people. Well, I used the same transferable skills that I used when I was selling drugs. See, when I was selling drugs, <laughs> I, made, I changed the way we sold drugs. I, I made 10,000 business cards, and I gave it out to every professional that I thought used drugs. <laughs> and the transferable skills that I used was basically I used another vehicle. I, I saw a different target market out there. When I came home, 
I saw all these ladies with yoga pants, and I said, this, this is my target market. So I went up to... <laughs> So I went up to all these ladies, I got them in the park, and we started working out, and then we started renting studios, and then we opened up our own facility in the Lower East Side, in the exact same corner where I started selling drugs at, and it came back into a full circle. But remember that rock bottom I told you about, that solitary confinement? That place where I felt Davis devastated in. This guy, Sultan Malik, Served 14 years in prison and seven years in this hellhole. Seven years in solitary confinement. Imagine that, seven years in 24-hour lockdown. Being beaten down, fed limited food, three showers a week. You'd go crazy. And he came home with a dream to start working out and become a personal trainer. And then I heard his story and he told me this and I said, you're the perfect fit and he landed in my lap at the perfect time. See, it got so overwhelming for me, I couldn't even fit anybody in my classrooms anymore. And then I multiplied exactly what I did with Sultan and today he's the vice president of Combody. And he should have been here today, but due to the bullshit system the bullshit American parole system, they didn't even allow him to come to TEDx today. And my brother's here in the audience, and uh, he should be trying to FaceTime him. But you know what's worse than prison? Bad Wi-Fi. <laughs> uh, so I, I don't know if you got him. And uh, another bad part of the American system, we, we only, we hold 5% of the, uh, we hold 5% of the world's population, but we hold 25% of the prison population. And we've been rated one of the top fitness studios and, and, and I've had a whole bunch of people ask me, you know, how are you doing this? How are you gonna create a, a larger impact? And it's been amazing the response and the amazing, the support that I've received throughout the whole last three years that I started this company. Um, we even trained Hillary Clinton's team to come to our fitness studio. Uh, Hillary's not been there yet, but we're gonna get a lot. <laughs> we're gonna get a lockdown soon. But we came up with an innovative way, and somebody asked me, how are you gonna scale this to the next level? How are you gonna you know, solve this American problem, this, this incarceration problem. And, and, I, and we came up with an innovative way of doing Combody Live. Combody Live is now a, a platform where you could virtually work out with anybody around, or, or anybody around the world could work out with a formerly incarcerated individual. And all you need is basically your body, or small constrained space, your favorite ex-convict, <laughs> to get that prison body you've always desired. <laughs> so, a few people ask me, why is this important in Hong Kong? Why is this important around the world? We're actually going inside prison and training these inmates to become personal trainers inside so we could try to create a direct pipeline from inside prison to work on Combody Live. So every month we're, we're creating a different formerly incarcerated individual in front of a camera. And why is this important to you? Because today's inmate is tomorrow's neighbor. Do you want that person living next to you reformed? Or do you want that other person committing a crime? So I'll leave you with this. Imagine if you were judged for the worst thing you've ever done. Imagine that. Or what if you stop viewing people for the worst thing they've ever done and start looking at the best things they've ever done? Thank you.